So we've had a few people in the community ask about the boards that Clayton has made for me. So we've got the boards loaded up here. We're about to head down the beach and we're gonna show you my quiver. Got a whole bunch of boards. We're gonna go through each and every single one of them. Before we go into the boards though, one thing that I do have down there in my in my quiver is hand blades. Hand blades are something which I got massively fascinated by because it's a big part of the accelerated surf program and your coaching is body yep. surfing. Correct. And uh, me being me wanted to try out All everything. <laughs> so these, uh, so this is the first one that I bought. This was just a real uh, Cheap just like a cheapy, cheapy thing. It was like about 10 bucks. Not the best of, uh, <laughs> best of hand blades. But these, uh, so I got these two here from, from Slide, Slide hand blades. This one is like a soft top kind of one, which is really good if you've got like just fat waves and want to just... Yeah, fat, just, hard tire, not yeah. really barrelly, just soft foamies. That's super fun. I've had so much fun with that on there, catching waves just for like just go for so far on them and you can even get it where you've got one hand in and you two hands on it and you can push all the way in and, and uh, glide in on that one. So that's a really cool one. That's got a massive amount of concave on the bottom. Yeah, so this this one is specifically designed for shore breaks. Yep. So it's got the big concave in it so you can really sort of dig it into the side of the wave and you, you can almost like go right back on yourself and, and ride through the barrel. So, so I'm presuming that gives you a lot of lift on the wave. Yeah, and, heaps. And a, picking you up out of the water. Yeah, heaps of heaps of lift and heaps of hold as well when you sort of dig that, that rail into the edge. And then I've also got this uh, Slightly less planes wooden one. Concave, but more harder edges. How does that one compare? Yeah, this one's, this one, I, I got this one before I got the, the slide hand boards. This one again is another super fun, super fun uh, hand blade. This is, I'd say this is like a bit of an all roundery kind of hand blade, even if it's like, if, it, if it's a little bit fat, it works. If it's if it's shore breaky, it works. Um, but my my go to is the is the slide one, the one with the big concave. That's sort of the one that I like to use the most because you can get super barreled on that thing. Let's jump into the board. So my quiver consists of a whole bunch of customs, which you made me. And then a few soft tops. So now I said to you initially when you you were getting some coaching from me and you said you wanted some boards. Yeah. And I said no. I yeah. said first change the way you surf and then I'll make you some boards that you'll start to enjoy. Yeah. So uh, do, you, do you recall that conversation? I do recall that conversation and I was thinking so why, why can't you just make me a damn board? Because you were trending on riding short, wide and fatter boards yeah. at the time. Um, which are great for just getting acceleration but they don't really teach you anything about how to ride a wave and how to tap into energy of a wave. Yeah, so, so prior to having any boards made, my, my, the, the way that I selected my boards was to basically go onto a surfboard website, use a volume calculator, then find a board that sort of suited that. And the way that I, I sort of found my reviews on the boards was I, I went on YouTube and looked at reviews of different boards and people surfing them and the, I think the big mistake that I made, which I've learned now, is that the reviews on the boards were good, but they were reviews from somebody who really knew how to surf. So when yeah. I then jumped on the board, So like a Noel Salas, Salas who basically yeah. could have been a pro surfer and rips. Yeah, so I, I think his, his channel is the, the Surf and Show. Amazing board reviews. Um, but yeah, obviously he's a, he, he is an amazing, yeah. amazing surfer. So he's doing these, these really good reviews on these, on these boards, but I wasn't surfing at, at, at his level. So See. I jumped on, uh, so the, the first board that I, that I got that I thought was going to be that magic board and be able to do everything was the Lost Puddle Jumper, the high performance version. And it didn't, while I enjoyed it, it didn't, it didn't surf the way that I thought it was going to surf. Or at least I didn't surf it the way I thought I was going to surf it. Okay. probably the best way. So you were thinking that by getting the Lost Puddle Jumper, suddenly it would fix your body, your, your lack of um, technique yeah. would improve by riding a better board. Yes, I thought that I could find a magic carpet that would suddenly make me surf like an absolute pro. Uh, now, now I realize that I've actually got to work on myself in order Correct. to be able to, to surf the board that way. 
Now, throughout my, my, my journey over the last, say, 18 months, I've now started to notice the things in boards which are then holding me back, which has been an interesting journey. But let's jump into the boards. Cool. First of all, let's cover the soft tops. This one here is a 510 Mick Fanning soft top. Uh, it's called the Little, Little Marley. Now, I know you love this one. I absolutely love this board. I call it the accidental ripper. It's a pretty heavy board. It's, it's really wide, but I just pick it up and I just, I've, I've got no expectation. I just think, oh, this is, this is just going to be fun. I'm just going to go out there and have a fun time, not looking at getting really rad or anything like that, but yeah, just going out there and having fun. Now I'm, I've found that it, it doesn't turn as easy as I thought it did back in the beginning. I've never got out of the water without a smile on my face after riding this. So it's really good fun, but it's not high performance surfing. For yeah, me. but I think the fact that it's a foamy and you know that you've got no expectation going into the water except yeah. for just having fun, it delivers time and time again. Yeah, absolutely. So we won't go into the dimensions or anything on this, apart from it is the 510 version. It's got a lot of volume, catches heaps of waves. And as I say, I've never, I've never not had flip fun. Flip it over for me. On this, oh, flip it over, okay. Okay, so you've got a far fin option. Do you ride it as a quad or a thruster? I always ride it as a quad. Okay. The reason for that is I've tried riding it as a thruster and it just just doesn't seem to, to surf as well as what it does on a quad. On a quad it's got a lot of speed, it flies down the flies down the line, puts me but then puts me way out down the line. So with it having such a wide tail, it doesn't want to pivot and turn no. being a thruster. But as a quad where you're turning a lot more slower, um, it tends to work really well. But yeah. But I yeah, this is my super fun board. So this is the, the other Mick Fanning that I got, which is the Beastie. Now this is 6'6 six, six in length. And this is the newest edition that you've just got recently. Yeah, so I got, yeah, as you can see, it's, I mean, it's got a bit of wax in it. It's still fairly clean though. I haven't really surfed it much. There was a bit, there was a bit of a reason for that. And that is that I just haven't really gelled with this one for some reason. This one, I just felt like it just wanted to go straight. It just didn't really want to turn or do anything. It just wanted to go straight, which I, I suppose if you're a beginner, that'd be amazing. If you're someone who has got wobbly technique or, or hands are all over the place, very mm. little coordination on a wave, it's fantastic because it's unresponsive to bad technique, but you also oh, okay. find that it's unresponsive to good technique yeah. too. And the reason being it's so wide in the nose, tail and midsection, that when you try to turn it, it just wants to keep staying flat. Yeah. It's also really thick that if you push the rail in the water, it just bobs back up, which means it almost prevents you from turning. Yeah. Um, and then also being a 6'6", six, six, it's a lot longer than your 5'10", which means the turning circle's way slower than you anticipated. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Let's get the next one. <laughs> wow. And there is a lot of board here. There's a lot of pink board now. Like the, the rail's the same in the nose, midsection and the tail. It's just volume stuffed into this everywhere. There is. And you the, love it. I ab So let me, let me tell you a bit of a story about this board. So this board I bought specifically when I broke my neck back at the beginning, at the time of recording this, it was back at, back at the beginning of this year. Uh, when I got back into the water just paddling, this was what I bought to keep my, my, my paddle strength up. So I bought this just so I could paddle it around. That kind of ended up then accidentally catching a couple of ripples, which then turned into me surfing it. So this this was bought initially for paddling, and then it kind but of it turned- But it also in, got you back into surfing, this particular board. It did. So I, I rode this for about, for about a month and a half where I was only riding this after I broke my neck, and I had so much fun on this thing. It would catch absolutely everything. What did it teach you? This, so big, big lesson from this one here. It really taught me how to slow down. Yeah. It really taught me to slow down my, 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 my surfing, slow down my turns. There's, despite the size of this thing, I've found it on, on really nice, long sort of slow waves. I found it really easy to turn it back, do those cutbacks into the foam, even on something of, of this size. I've really enjoyed, really, really enjoyed this board. <laughs> So this is the mid-length. Now, bear in, bear in mind that this came about when you couldn't surf, and I started to tell you about the Torren Martins and surfing smooth and surfing in style and slowing down. Yeah. And then we made you the mid-length. Yes. So, I so love this board. You need to explain um, where your head was at and how you wanted to start changing your surfing. 
<laughs> yeah, so after watching Torren, I just watched his sort of smooth, graceful style and realised... Flow. Yeah, realised that that was the route that I sort of wanted to head towards rather than trying to just be like fast moving all the time. And so I really liked the way that Torren Martin surfed on a mid-length and thought, well, maybe I should try out a mid-length. If I to ask you for it. one word as to how the board what feels when you're surfing it. Feels when I surf it? Oh, okay. Um, I couldn't do really do one word. I'd say connected, flowing, and fun. Connected, flowing, and fun on this one here. Again, this is another board. It sounds like I'm saying this about all the boards, but this is another board that I just have so much fun on. Uh, again, catches catches some of the small waves. I've also, I've also ridden this. It's set up as a twin fin. Bring that around. So it's set up as a, as a 20. And I rode this out when we had a pretty big swell come through. And you, afterwards you said I probably should have ridden it as a quad. But even as a twin fin, had so much fun. Got into the waves nice and early. Now this has got a V'd bottom, hasn't it? Yeah. So it's got, it's got a V'd bottom. It's a local fan, got no idea who he is. But so we got a V'd, we got a V'd bottom on this one here. So this thing turns really nicely. It's, uh, it's, it's really fun for, for doing the cutbacks. You've got to hold them, hold them for a nice length of time. And again, like the, the pink soft top, this is another board that has taught me to slow down again as well. Yeah. And I would say that since riding this for a couple of months, my surfing on a short board has now got so much better. Your surfing looks a hell of a lot more smoother and you're more in tune with the wave. Yeah, I'd I like think. to think I am. It, it definitely feels, feels like it's I am. It's taught you how to flow. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. When I said I would make you boards, yep. I said that I'd make you a swallowtail that would work a certain way, and I'd make you a roundtail that would work a certain way. Yep. Um, you straight away fell in love with the swallowtail. Oh, lo I, I love this one. That was your, your go-to. Yep. Why? When I rode it, I felt like I was going nice and fast, and I, I suppose I kind of felt... Um, I felt like I was in control. I felt like I was doing really good turns, and it seemed to catch waves really quick and and really easily. And I, I always felt like I was in the in, in the right place when I was on this board. It just it, it just seemed to work so each, each and every single time. Both of these are six one. Now, so so there is a slight difference in them in that this is six foot, this is six one. The leaderage is almost identical. The width is identical. The only difference being that that one is one inch longer and it's got a round tail and this one's got the, the, the swallow tail. I think you rode that at Snapper the first time after I spoke to yeah, you. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. And you said that it was incredibly fast and you were making crazy sections, yeah, yeah. you even got barreled and you could turn it. Well, you, not you, really, I got, I got, I got close some, out barreled. Yeah. <laughs> and then you didn't quite gel with this one. Not at first. Not okay. at first, I'm giving the game away here a little bit, but not at first. Okay, so why? Why did this one not have that that one had? So this one, so this one didn't have the speed that this one had. This one had a lot of speed. I'd take off on a wave straight away, boom, or straight down the line. Felt like I was going amazing, and I felt like I was doing these really cool turns. In the last two weeks, this one has suddenly overtaken this one. The reason for that being, I realised that this one was making me surf too fast. It was sending me down the line, putting me out on the shoulder and it was keeping me away from surfing in the pocket. I've also found now as well, since slowing down a lot more, that this one is harder to do my full cutback on. Don't get me wrong, it does the cutback and it, and it does it nicely, but it feels a bit more forced. Whereas this one sort of goes, this one, ooh, whereas this one's, ooh. That's my, that's, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know how to describe it. This one would be amazing if I was surfing somewhere like Kira, where I knew it was just gonna be barrels or, yep. or over a Stradi or something, where it was just gonna be barreled. This one would be really cool for that because it'd be nice and fast. But if I wanted to start to get into turns, then I need to go to this one. So this one is now kind of the one that I'm going to out of these two. So you first had to get comfortable of surfing in the pocket. Yeah. And this one performed really well in the pocket. Yeah. But when you race into the shoulder, this one died on the shoulder yeah, and it, it didn't like yeah. it out there. Where that one was fine with being on the shoulder. Yeah, so as my, as, as my surfing is slowly starting to get better and I am starting to surf in that pocket, because this one isn't so fast, it's keeping me back in the pocket. And because of the round tail on it, it means that I'm able to turn in that pocket, really stay in that pocket and turn nice and quickly. Whereas this one is a much more of a longer drawn out turn. I, I, just, want, I, just, I just want to talk about this because when I asked you to make me these these boards back at the beginning and you actually agreed okay we'll make you some boards 
these were the first two boards that Clayton ever made me, and you did them as quads. I had no option. You made me surf them as quads. Why? Because you used to surf very flat and just pump your back foot really hard. And if you did it on this, the board would just slide out and mm. would give you a negative response. But when you started to lean and put it on rail, the board would just whoa. It would just be like a turbo blast of speed and hold. Now that my, my, my positioning and my wave selection has become better, there is no difference in how, I, how many waves I catch between these two boards because I've realized now that it's got nothing to do with how much volume is on the board. It's to do with my positioning of whereabouts I'm actually catching the waves. How, how wide are we on these? We're, I think we're 19 and three quarters, yep. isn't it? 19. Clayton purposely doesn't write the dimensions on the bottom of the first boards that he gave me uh, so that I couldn't sort of go, oh, how big is it? Uh, so 19 and three quarters wide. Both of them are concaved. and yep. singles, double concaves. In terms of rocker, I mean, if I just turn one on the edge. Tons a, of rocker. Yeah, loads of rocker, so they fit nicely into the pocket. So yeah, yeah these, these, both, both, both these boards, super epic. So here we have my step up. This is, so when we when you very first made me boards, you made me three boards. Yeah. The round tail, the swallow tail, and my step up here. Now you quite probably have noticed I like the colour pink. <laughs> and I also like quite bright colours. So this is the step up. This is six foot three. It is I think it's about thirty five liters. Uh, Slightly more pull than tail. Yep, so got a bit more pull than tail. Again, this one's set up as a quad, slight con and uh, concave running, run running through it. Single to double. Single to double concave running through Way it. Way more nose and tail rocker on this. It's more rockered out. Okay, so it's got more, a lot more rocker. The first time I took it out was when it was bigger. And I, I think it's always a bit weird whenever you take out a brand new board and you take it out and it's bigger straight away because you don't know how the board's going to respond. But straight away, it just felt really good turned really, really nice drawn out turns on it. So your bigger board should always be looser than your smaller board. Did you realize that? Looser? Sm yeah, it should turn easier. It definitely turns easier. So the like, fact that- nice, it, Like that, those, those turns were really nice. I mean, there's bigger waves, obviously big drawn yeah. out turns, but- The reason you want your bigger board to turn easier is because you're going faster. So if you're going faster, your board automatically tightens up. So you almost tow the fins in a little bit to loosen the board up to make okay. it turn a bit better. Now, you also ride the tail a slightly bit narrower because if, if you've got a real big sucky wave, the wave might flip the board, mm. but by having a narrow tail, you can actually sit in a hollower, steeper part of the wave and get more control over the board. I have yet to put this board to proper use. <laughs> <laughs> But, so width-wise as well, it's, it's the same as the Swallowtail and the Roundtail. All of these are of the same model, they've just got different tails and slightly uh, different lengths. That's, that's pretty much the only difference. Yeah, well, it's got more nose rocker, more tail okay. rocker, the tail's more pulled in, um, so they, they, it's got more volume under the chest to paddle in. Mm. So up front in the front area, there's more chunk to it, yeah. but the tail's more slithered out. And basically, this board is engineered to control speed. It's not there to make speed. Okay. So it's a slow board. It requires a powerful wave to push it. Yeah. So it'll, it'll only really come to life when there's energy inside of the wave. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, because I had a few months off because of broken neck and, and stuff, I haven't had a huge amount of chance to surf this. I probably only surfed it maybe five or six times. I haven't taken it inside a barrel or anything like that yet. So maybe one day, once we've got a slightly bigger day, I'll come back and do a, uh, another review on this board and, and, and how it fared up in those bigger, bigger conditions. Okay, so here we have my small wave board. Now this, this board has a, a special place in my, in my heart because this board you got me to make myself. Yeah, I wanted you to make a board to learn the whole process of manufacturing from A to Z. Mm. Uh, so with, with all of the boards actually that, uh, that I've showed you that, that are Clayton boards, they're all spine tech technology. We can go into spine tech in, in a different video, but they're all spine tech. This was, so I made this, it's almost a year old now. And in yeah. a year, this board has got a lot of stories to tell. Uh, quick bit about it, the handprints on it are my hands, my wife's hands, and my two kids' hands. So I just thought it was a nice bit of artwork on there. It's the, it's the only board that isn't really a luminous, I suppose. Five 
10, 5.11, so, so it's 5.11 in length. This, Width, I think it's 21. It's definitely a lot wider, yep. a lot flatter. And I think the, wide tail. the idea is sometimes on the Gold Coast, a lot of swell goes past us, it doesn't wrap in, yep. and we get this really weak one to two foot swell. Yeah. And this board is made to generate speed. Yeah, absolutely generate speed. And that it does very well. This one, again, is another, same as the mid length, it's got a V, a v through the bottom. So it gives me that rail to rail. Because of the extra width, we've got the V there to make it go rail to rail. This was the first board that you give me with the option of having the center fin <laughs> ridden it once with the center fin in the back then went straight back to quads uh, just didn't like it with the center with, with the center fin in it now uh, this was interesting this board because i made it myself i've got to realize just how hard the process of making a board is yeah it's it's very very involved you shaped it yourself glassed it yourself yep. and sanded it yourself and i just overlooked the process yeah and so it, that, that was a real experience going through and making a board. Now, this board, I was saying to Clayton probably just about three days ago that it might be time for me to put this board away and not ride it anymore. The reason for that is because I now feel that this, is, this board is holding me back because of the width of the tail. I found it really hard to do the turns that I want to do. And you sort of looked at me and smiled as if to sort of say, I told Finally, you, yeah. I told you that at some point you would outgrow this board, which for me is, is uh, I'm kind of happy and sad about it because I do love this board. Uh, I'll tell you a few, few more stories about this board in a second. But um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting feeling now with my, but from making this board, the knowledge that I've gained about surfboards has now put, put me in a position where I understand more about what's going on when I'm stood on it. And for me to now suddenly realize that doing a turn but the reason why I'm not completing the turn is because I'm being held back because it's got a thick, wide tail. It's not allowing me to do exactly what I want to do. Now, uh, what I love about that moment. feedback that you gave me is when we first met, these were your go-to boards that you loved. Yep. You based all your knowledge on just getting something with speed that went fast. Yeah. Where now you're almost at the opposite of the spectrum where you want to slow down, stay in the pocket and do turns. Yeah. Yeah, now this, this board, is it's seen quite a few things well the main one being this the, the, the nickname of this board is the neck breaker <laughs> because this is the board that i was riding when i got taken over the falls uh, or hitting the hitting the, Pulled in the barrel and broke the lip yeah and then hit the hit the sandbank and broke my neck so it does have a very special place in my heart or in my neck one or the other whichever way you want to look at it but really it's, it's been a really good fun board and a really good one to learn on and it has really high, like, like, like you just said, that short, fat, wide, low rocker board, it's shown me that everything that I thought I wanted to ride to be able to surf amazing, right now that's not the right board for me. Now I need to start to go for more rocker, narrower board, yeah. So, so the volume in this, we said 33? I think it's 33 litres, I think. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not written on there. I don't know why I'm looking. But I think it's 33 litres. And it doesn't catch waves necessarily any easier than, than, than the other ones because, as I said, it, with one of the other boards, I've now learned to position myself properly. Yeah. So it's kind of taken the ability to catch waves out, out of the And that positioning all came probably from your body surfing? Yeah, that came from body surfing. Body surfing was the big game changer when it came to understanding whereabouts to position myself uh, when I'm taking off on waves. <laughs> So here it is, here it is, I'm smiling already. This is currently, uh, this is currently my, my favorite board. Although the problem is it's not mine. This is actually Clay, this is Clayton's board. Look, it's, so it's let, even I'll, got a leash on it. That's, that's how good this board is. It's ready to rock and roll. I lent that to you, what, a month or two ago? And I haven't seen it yeah, back yet. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe a month ago, Clayton lent it to me. If, you, if you're following us on Facebook, you would have seen me come out uh, after I was serving on this thing. I was so, I'm getting excited again already. Um, but this thing, was next level good like so let, let's 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 just explain the board first of all you can tell it's not mine because it's not fluorescent but um so this is your twin pin isn't it yeah so it, it, so i normally ride it is. i normally ride five sixes yep and in my twin pin i wanted a bigger board for bigger waves so i went five ten 
and it's got 27 liters in it, which is, I normally ride 25, 26. It's 510, 27 liters. I normally ride 32, so it's five liters under what I'd normally ride. Yep. Width-wise, do you know how wide this one is? 19 and a quarter. 19 and a quarter, so half an inch narrower than the other ones that I ride. And it's two and three eighths thick. Two and three eighths, and it's a 20. Oh, it is a V'd uh, V bottom with V'd with concave each side, yeah? Yep. Yep, so V'd, V'd with concave, 20. Okay, so again, if I had to say what feeling jumps into your mind when you jumped onto the board? So before I jumped onto the board, I was worried because of the sheer lack of volume on it, the size of the board, I was just like, I'm not gonna catch anything on it. That was my thought process going into it. The feeling I had on it though was just one of epicness. It was just, it was, so it was really fun, really responsive. It had no problems at all catching waves. If anything, I caught uh, uh, as many, if not more waves than I normally would. How much glide has it got on your first takeoff? The, the, everything is just ridiculous about this. So I'm, it's, I, I do feel that it's probably maybe slightly the wrong size for me. So I'm gonna get one made for myself. But hands down, out of all of the boards that I've ridden, this is, this is the most fun board. I, just thinking back about the surface that I've had on it now, massive smiles on my face. The one thing I would say, I did take it out on a day when it was really sweepy because of the lack of volume. Yeah. I did really struggle to paddle. Uh, on that particular day. So that, that, that was real hard work. I came out, my arms felt like they were gonna fall off. But apart from that one, all of the other surfs I've had on this have been just so much fun. The thing turns like really nicely in the pocket. I'm doing this like it's really fast, but it's not. It's like these real eyes oh, just, it's just amazing. I love this board, it's so cool. Has it taught board. you anything? Taught me that I want one of these. That's what, that's what it's taught me, but it's, it's... I remember having a session with you where you started to really yeah. move your body well yeah, and the board started to respond yeah. even better i need to come down a little bit i'm getting a little bit excited about this board so you often talk to me i'm going to try to balance this just here i don't want to damage it talk to me about having the, my hands on the angle of the wave right in this thing maybe it was because of the, the the lower volume i'm not sure but i felt so connected to that wave i felt like i was at one with the wave i felt like my hands were like like in, in the, the right place each time it just yeah it kind of it kind of blew my mind a little bit this i think this you almost found that like that flow state where you were just at one with the wave and the water and everything yeah. just flowed really well have it that is my quiver broken down i hope that you found this useful which was your favorite board which artwork did you like the best leave that in the comments below we'll see you in the next video if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet make sure you do also hit that notification bell so that you get notified whenever a new video comes out but until the next video we'll see you soon